of us learned to think of a little Canadian town like this as the place to buy our groceries and to have our hair cut, to see our friends and hear the news. Or perhaps as a youngster, we drove the milk into such a town to catch the train for the city. There's never much hustle and bustle here. The ways are quiet and especially tranquil on this summer evening, for it is Sunday. If we are city people, still the little town calls to us with its gentler ways, its kindly people. There's old Ned Smalley, for instance. He saw the last spike driven in the railway that joined the east and the west in 1885. His great-granddaughter, Catherine, is a ledger keeper in the bank. And Thomas Parsons, one of the town's leading men, He's the mayor and owns the furniture store. And of course, Miss Snell, the seamstress and her cronies. Everybody in town knows that Mary Taylor and Billy Grant have been going together since Billy was old enough to carry Mary's school books for her. Billy's idea is to get a job that's right for him and marry Mary someday. But Dr. Manson doesn't seem to be here. If it weren't for Doc Manson, half the folks in town wouldn't be alive. He's on duty at all hours, in any kind of weather. George, everything is going to turn out fine. Yeah, I guess so. I should think you'd be the happiest man in the county. That makes three fine boys you have. Pretty soon you'll be able to retire and let your sons farm the place for you. Retire? Yeah. Well, I don't know how I'm going to manage next week even. It's all right for you to say Gene's got to have special care of nurse and all. It's been special care for the last five months. If only I could get a chance to breathe, Doc. I... I just can't afford it, Doc. I just haven't got the money. Well, surely there's something can be done about this, George. Get a good night's sleep. I'll, uh, I'll talk to you about this in the morning. Good night. citizen, and another score is chalked up for Dr. Manson. While he tries to catch up on his much-needed sleep, the rest of the town awakes. In a community like Mapleville, most people know a great deal about other people's lives, and for the most part, for all their human frailties, they find them good. For all their varied qualities, the citizens of Mapleville and the farmlands around it have one quality that is outstanding. Stability, yes, common sense, coupled with enterprise. Here, for example, we may find a farmer come to town to borrow from the bank money to buy seed or hire help to take off his crop. Mapleville has its industries, too. For example, there's Fairburn Lumber Company sawmill. From here, the products of Canada's forests go out to build new houses, new industries. There's a grist mill, too, in Mapleville, where farmers bring their grain. But the greatest wealth of Mapleville lies in its younger generation.
Here they prepare to take their place in tomorrow's world, perhaps far away in some bustling city, or perhaps right here in Mapleville. Much of the life of Mapleville is centered in the general store. Here you may buy everything from axe handles to aprons, from shoes to shovels. Here is the clearinghouse for all the news of the community. Oh, and it happened just like I said it would. Keeping the poor doctor up all night with only Hannah Bright there to help him. Oh, well, I often say you might just as well talk to the four winds as some people for all the good it does. And that dear Mr. Gregory, poor man. If you ask me, he's a saint, that's what he is. Struggling to keep that farm of his going with a sick wife and three children now, and too proud to ask help from anybody. They say Mr. Gregory could be the most successful farmer around here, too, if he had half a chance. Oh, there's that young Billy Grant. They say he hopes to marry Mary Taylor. But I say, what's he going to support her on? If you ask me, he thinks he's too good for Mapleville. Why, hello, Billy. You still in town? Somebody said you had a big job in the city. Well, not yet, Miss Snell. Uh, that is, I am going to the city. I I'm leaving any day now. Any day. Isn't that a little risky? I mean, after all, a boy like you really ought to have some advice from an older person first. That's right, Miss Snell. Uh, as a matter of fact, um, I'm, I'm on my way over to have a talk with, um, with Doc Manson right now. Uh, I, I just dropped Is there something you wanted, Billy? No, uh, no thanks, not right now, Mr. Crestwick. I'll drop in later, I guess. Well, I, I, I don't want to keep Doc Manson waiting. Uh, <laughs> see you later, Miss Snell. Well, Billy, you don't look like a very sick man. What seems to be the trouble? Oh, I feel fine. I never felt better in my life. But well, now, let's see. Just undo your shirt, young man. We'll, uh, we'll just check up. Now, take a deep breath. That's right. Hold it. Now, let go. There. Now, another breath. Hmm. They tell me you're going to the city. Well, now, breathe out. That's right. Very interesting. Now, another breath. There. Big job, I suppose. No, no. Now, hold it. There. Well, we'll be sorry to lose you around here, Billy. Mary will, too, but... Uh, I suppose she'll wait. As a matter of fact, I haven't any job waiting for me in the city. Not yet. But there are lots of jobs there, big opportunities. Why, what would happen to the world if everybody just stayed put where they were? Why, I don't know, Billy. But sometimes I think it might not be a bad idea. Oh, yeah, but uh, you don't understand. You, you didn't care much for those two jobs you had here since you left school, did you? It's not exactly that. It's... Well... It's just that there's no chance here. I'd never do anything important, anything worthwhile. So, you see, un unless there's something the matter with me, y you didn't find anything wrong, did you, Doc? No, nothing wrong. I just thought I detected signs of a maple mill heart. Uh, but uh, that could be quite good. You're just making fun of me. No, I think I understand. Take that job you were offered in the bank here, for instance. Now, banks are mighty important things in their way. You see, banks deal in money. Now, money isn't everything, but it sure helps make the community go. In business, money is like, uh, like, well, it's like the blood in the human body. It flows all through. And the nervous system, just like the light and power wires. You might say that each one of the human organs is like uh, some business or activity around Mapleville. Now, take the heart here. That's something like the bank. You know the cheese factory. Oh, sure. They say Peter Graham is making a big thing of that since old man Jackson died. He is, but when old Mr. Jackson died, the executors couldn't carry on, so they wanted to sell it. But they couldn't find anyone who would buy it for cash. Now, if they closed down, it meant that about 70 farmers here about would lose an outlet for their milk. Now, they realized that young Peter Graham knew the business, and while he had some assets, he didn't have enough ready money. So they got together with our friend Mathers, the bank manager. How could he fix it? Well, Mr. Mathers arranged for the bank to loan young Pete the amount needed to buy the factory, 
the money to be paid back at a reasonable rate out of profits. Now young Peter's on his feet, the executors have wound up the estate, and what's more, the 70 farmers have found their outlet for their milk. Now all that sounds pretty important and worthwhile to me. I didn't know the bank did that sort of thing. Lots of people don't realize it. Well, that's what I mean about the way banks keep that business blood circulating. But I was thinking of you. Oh, I don't see what that has to do with me. Well, it's just that you're going into business. And it seems to me that a man like my friend John Mathers, being manager of the bank here, he must know a great deal about business. He might have an idea or two about how a young fellow ought to steer himself. Wouldn't do any harm to ask him about it, anyhow. It wouldn't cost anything. As a matter of fact, I have an appointment at the bank right now. You'd better come along and keep me company. Nice to see you, Bill. But I hear you're leaving us. Well, I hope to get yes, away. Yes, John. Billy's been telling me that he's leaving us to seek his fortune in the big city. In fact, if I didn't know him so well, I might think he felt he was just a little too good for us here in Mapleville. All of us, perhaps, except a uh, certain Miss Taylor. This is terrible. Oh, of course, there's a lot to be said for his point of view. Oh, gosh, it's nothing like that, Mr. Mathers. It's, it's just that, well, I'm looking for a job that's more interesting than anything around here, if you know what I mean. Naturally. I should have realized that when I offered you that job here in the bank. Oh, I didn't mean anything like that. Don't think I don't appreciate it. I, I guess I just don't know very much about it. Oh, I understand perfectly, Bill. Mapleville, well, it must seem pretty small potatoes to a young fellow like you. And this bank, it's a pretty good example of Mapleville life. It must look pretty dull from the outside. But have you ever had a good look around inside? Got a minute? In the first place, Perhaps you'd like to know what a bank is. What a bank is? No, I'm serious. There's a lot more to a bank than appears on the surface. Take this place, for instance. This is a branch bank. It's part of a business that has branches like this all over Canada, in Newfoundland, and abroad. There are 10 banks in the Canadian chartered banking system. All Canadian banks operate strictly under an act of Parliament. Every 10 years, Parliament reviews the Bank Act and makes any alterations that will enable the banks better to serve the changing needs of the whole Canadian people. But across the country, those needs differ. Fishing, mining, business, farming, industry, lumbering, and so on. The banks of Canada are geared to serve their individual requirements. Quite a business. That's just what it is, a business. And the principal business of the bank is right there at that wicket. You've deposited money yourself, Bill, like over five million other Canadians. That's the first job of the bank, safeguarding people's money, paying them interest on their savings, and keeping enough cash on hand so that anyone can withdraw all or any part of his money any time he wants. Then, too, the bank offers a wide variety of other services, such as safety deposit boxes for storing paper and valuables. It helps business firms by making collections for them through its branches in all parts of Canada. It sells money orders, providing a safe and sure way of sending money wherever you wish. The bank does these things and many others. Discounting paper, for instance, Discounting paper? Yes. Suppose you sell a cow or a horse and the buyer gives you a note for it. He undertakes to pay it in, say, 90 days. But you want your money now. Well, you bring the note here and provided it is made by some responsible person or your own credit is good, you can get the present value of the note right away in cash. Well, still, it, it doesn't sound to me as if a bank could make enough money that way to pay all the interest on its deposits. No, you're quite right. The second function of the bank, after safeguarding people's savings, is lending to assist business and production. For example, a bank lends to a merchant to enable him to buy for cash and take advantage of lower prices, or to pay his bills in time to get his trade discounts. When a bank lends money to assist business, 
It often means that new jobs are created. Do you mean business like, um, well, say the Fairburn Lumber Company right here in town? Exactly. Somebody mentioned my name? Hello, Jim. Hello, John. You know young Bill Grant here. I certainly do. What are you doing here, Bill? Borrowing a thousand dollars? Well, not quite, Mr. Fairburn. <laughs> <laughs> I was just trying to explain to Bill what a bank can do for a business. Maybe you can tell him, Jim. Well, John, I ought to be able to. For one thing, I can tell you about my banking. Mr. Mitters here can't. He's bound to keep mum about his customers' affairs, but I'm not. Not about mine, that is. Look, see this check? Well, that's money I've borrowed from the bank here on my credit. Well, this check is going to do a lot. The first thing it's going to do is send a couple of hundred men into the bush. You see, I've got an order for lumber to be shipped over to Europe. Now, with the help of this loan, I can pay the wages of the men in the woods and the river drivers who bring the logs down to the mill. I can pay the wages of the men at the sawmill. I can ship the finished lumber and pay my bills all along the way without waiting for the lumber to reach Europe and the money for it to come all the way back here. And when my money comes in, I pay off the bank. I make a reasonable profit at the cost of a small amount of bank interest. Now, that's meant jobs in Canada, right here in Mapleville. And it's brought money into this community all the way from Europe. I get my money in Canadian dollars, no matter if the buyer paid in pounds, guilders, or francs. Thanks, Jim. You told the story better than I could. Okay, John. Those things Mr. Fairburn was telling us, I had no idea. Well, there are more than 3,000 branches of Canadian banks across Canada, all doing the same sort of thing and competing with each other in the service they give. But what about me? Suppose I wanted to borrow some money. The bank lends to individuals, too, for all sorts of useful purposes. To put young people through college, to let people take advantage of summer prices to put in their winter's coal supply, for illness, and a great many other things. Yes, I was thinking of that, but when the banks charge interest on these loans, can they charge any old rate they like? No, Bill, we can't. In the first place, banks are all out for business, just like grocery stores or manufacturers. Each one is trying to excel the other in service to individuals, companies, the municipality, the school board, hospitals, churches. The rates may vary with the risk. But the Bank Act fixes 6% as the top rate a bank may charge. 6% a year. 6% on $100 for three months. That's only a dollar and a half. That's right. Yeah, but who owns the banks? Is it a few big shots? No, there are more than 50,000 people, most of them Canadians, who own the shares of the Canadian banks, some of them right here in town. What kind of people are they? Well. There are people in over 160 occupations. Stenographers, stevedores, farmers, fishermen, businessmen, clergymen, doctors, trappers, druggists. A large number are women, many of them widows. Well, there's just one thing more, Mr. Mavis. Uh, as a depositor, the I... A depositor like is the foundation of the whole thing, Bill. Don't forget, it's you and the more than five million other depositors that make it possible for the banks to perform all the services they do. I see. Getting back to loans, it's the borrower with his enterprise that starts the ball rolling. The making of a loan always starts with the person who comes to the bank with his worthwhile plan. When could I start, Mr. Mathers? You go home and think it over, Bill. I hope you feel the same way tomorrow. Just as people need the banks, the banks need the best types of young people. Hey, Mary! Hello, Mary. Hello, Bill. What's doing? I... I was just talking to Miss Snell. She was telling me she saw you a little while ago in Crestwick. She said... She said you'd made up your mind about going to the city. Yeah, that's right. When do you go, Bill? I don't. Here. Can I go? Nope, I'm going to stay. I'm going to work here in the bank. But I thought you said... Oh, never mind what I said. I found out there's something very important and worthwhile for me right here in Mapleville. More than one thing. No, no, no. So that's the whole story, John. 
I've known Gregory a long time, and he... Uh... George Gregory has been banking here a good many years. As you say, he may not have much in the way of ready cash, but all this time he's been building up a reserve of something besides money. Something that's in some ways better. Character and the credit that stands for. You see, an emergency isn't the only requirement for a loan. He could get one anyway for any useful purpose. The bank will look after Gregory, Doctor, and thanks for telling me. That's right, Dr. Manson. It was you, along with all the other depositors, who made possible that loan to Gregory. Maybe, too, it was because in a community like Mapleville, of which there are so many in the Dominion, people get to know one another and the stuff they're made of. And it's good stuff. The stuff that has made Canada great. Mm -hmm.